Good afternoon, this is Ray Urias with OP Noobs, PC Gaming by PC Gamers. We have an opportunity to sit down with Sega, to sit down with James Whitston of Creative Assembly. You flew over, did you fly over uh, Sunday or, or, or sometime between then? Uh, we came over last week just for a bit of acclimatization time and then straight into the show this week. So you've been here for uh, almost uh, going on a week and change now? That's right, yeah. Yep. Is this your first E3? Uh, no, it's my second one. We came in 2015 with uh, Total War Warhammer 1. So obviously with Total War Warhammer 2 this year, uh, we've got big presence on the stage floor. And that does remind me, I apologize, James, campaign design director. Lead. Lead campaign design director calling the shots on the first player, uh, first person experience there, not multiplayer, but the campaign. Such a there's so many things we can talk about this title. We had an opportunity yesterday to, to play through it. And so this isn't your first E3. So, but this is your first E3 where they admit the public, the general public. That's right. Yeah. And it's great to see people interacting with the game. We've got a load of PCs set up in the booth. We've got one of our quest battles with uh, one of the legendary lords from the Lizardmen called Krokgar fighting out against a high elf army in a spectacular environment at the Fallen Gates. Krokgar against the high elf army. I did play yesterday. Fred forced me to play on hard mode. And I, I cleared the bridge. I had my artillery units. Uh, I, I think I stormed the temple. I got all the way up to the top. It was, there was so much depth to that game. It, right clicking, holding down, right click, and sp spreading out my army tactically. The, I like how when you do control groups, the, uh, the, the numbers actually show up for the groups. The, the cameras, the visuals, the story is so rich. And you must have had a lot of material to work with when you were. Can you walk us through that process as the lead designer for the campaign, how you started and how it, it came together? Um, did it come together as you expected? Yeah, I mean, basically, we sat down a few years ago uh, when we first got the license to work with Games Workshop on this, and we very quickly realized there was such a wealth of material there. There's something like 15, 16 army books, a load of black library material, and we quickly reached the con conclusion there was no way we were going to be able to do justice to all of that in one game. So we, uh, we have a strategy where we're releasing three standalone games, Warhammer 1, 2, and 3, and we're supporting that with DLC and free LC in between, and that allows us to really go into depth with each of those races. Obviously, there's a whole load of new mechanics with giant creatures, flying creatures, individual lords and heroes that can be riding on mounts or throwing spells around. So we had a good base, 15 years of making Total War games, which are huge games in their own right, and this that gave us a great foundation to build on with kind of building the battles and uh, the campaign mechanics as well, and something that we've really focused on uh, first of all in the first game but particularly in the second game now was differentiate differentiating each of the races that you can play as so they all have totally different mechanics so you'll you'll complete a campaign as the high elves using their various diplomacy mechanics that they can do things with you'll play as the lizard men and you've got the geomantic web to rebuild and it, it just keeps the whole thing fresh constantly i'm thinking when you're talking about three different campaigns what's actually coming to mind is way back i think in the late 90s was it was starcraft and you had the Terran, the Zerg, and the Protoss, but this is like that with way more depth. I mean, we didn't even start playing until 10 minutes of this rich, beautifully voice acted, a very cinematic story. Do you just have books at home? Where do you draw from as an influence to lead this campaign? The mechanics, are you more involved with the campaign from a narrative perspective or from a mechanical perspective or both? And how do those come together? Well, it was very similar. The early kind of planning for these games was very similar to one of our historical games where there is a, a huge history there, albeit a kind of invented fantasy history that Games Workshop was produced so we spent a long time doing our book research but then kind of phase two of that was actually playing their game the tabletop game so we, we played every race yeah exactly so we played every race we've really got our heads around what the differences are between them and like I say we decided instead of kind of flattening that out and filling holes in rosters and things to try and make it fit neatly into a total war package we decided to actually embrace that and really bring that out the difference between each of those races to really keep the whole thing fresh the we, how big is your team? 
Um, well, the campaign team is, in terms of designers, there's three or four of us, but obviously there's a whole support team of code, you know, incredibly talented coders, artists, animators, audio people, and it's just been incredible to watch, you know, these creatures like an ancient stegodon coming to life on people's monitors and, you know, the sounds that, that are created to support that, the, the, the spectacle of the battles. You've got the epic scale of a total war, real-time battle, um, but now you've got it with all this extra good stuff in it. You were definitely going for sound and spectacle, and that came across. And I would like to, is this the temple from yeah. uh, yesterday? I would like to discuss with this very rich story. We've talked to a lot of studios. We heard a beautiful quote earlier this morning that the internet doesn't have borders. And your gamers are going to be in the hundreds of thousands, the millions, the tens of millions. How do you make, how do you localize that story with these different, these are very different gaming markets. We're talking about Asia, Europe, South America, North America. How has that process been? Well, I mean, like I said, we draw from what Games Workshop has created and that just feeds our own creative energies. So I think um, a great storyline is a universal language anyway. And we, we do convert our game into many, many different languages so that as many people as possible can kind of access it. So like I say, a great, great storyline that kind of each of the races in our game has their own storyline as well, uh, kind of to bring the player to an understanding of, of what's going on in the world, why their race is trying to do what they're doing. Uh, and that's all fully supported by movies and so on. Which race do you like to play as? Ha, whichever one I'm currently playing. So I'm currently playing Elizabeth campaign. I'm absolutely loving that. Last week I was playing a High Elves campaign. Absolutely loving that. Uh, initially, uh, when I first sat down to play the tabletop game, I was drawn to the vampire counts, and I love that as well. So, and that, I think that's the charm of the tabletop game, and it's something because we've tried to do homage to the tabletop game and everything that we're doing while still keeping the Total War sandbox gameplay as well. I think that that's kind of translated very well. So, you know, each of the races is totally fresh to players. And as you start to understand the mechanics and the way of interacting with all the other races, you know, that's, that's really refreshing. I think that we hear that a lot. We see a strong correlation between the success of a game and the level of respect that the game developers bring to it. So when you talk about homage, that really resonates. I, we know that resonates with gamers. James, do we have a date for Total Warhammer, the three different uh, campaigns that you were talking about releasing? Yeah, we don't have a date yet for uh, Total War Warhammer 3. Total War Warhammer 2 will be hitting the streets on September 28th this year. So. That's going to be a huge... That's going to be a huge fall release. Absolutely, and it's important to note as well, if you bought the first game, Total War Warhammer 1, and you buy this one as well, shortly after we release Total War Warhammer 2, we'll actually be for free releasing a combined campaign map, which includes the landmass from the first game and the second game, with all of the races, all of the DLC and free LC race, races as well, in a, like a super epic, massive scale campaign. For the, for the players that have Total, total uh, War 1? That's right. And, right. And, and the, yes, and the second game as well. So they combined together into this free, massive chunk of content. So going from the tabletop games where you're paying a lot of attention and bringing that over into the PC world, the PC culture, what have been some key points that you've had to keep an eye on and you, you've had your team keep an eye on? Well, it's a two-way street. Obviously, we've got a lot of design ideas. We get design ideas from the source material as well. But we we do have a dedicated community team that are really keeping an eye on ideas that are coming from our players as well because they're the people out there playing the game as well and they can have some great ideas. We've got full Steam Workshop support as well where people can upload their mods for other people to try out as well. And, you know, we've had some great ideas from that. So I mentioned that the um, legendary lords for each faction now, uh, for each race now have their own individual faction. That was something that was drawn very much from comments that were coming from the PC from the gaming workshops. community. So you've mentioned the workshops a couple of times. Could you expand on that? Yeah, so Steam um, have a service where um, if, the, if the game supports it, players can um, create their own mods and we've released tools to allow players to create their own mods of our game and then upload them for other people to experience as well. And it's just been, a, a, it's fantastic to see the amount of variety that people come up with. The PC, PC gamers bring a lot. There's a big programming uh, part of that audience. Absolutely, yeah. And it's, uh, like I say, it's, it's tapping into that that huge resource of experienced gamers out there who also have great design ideas for stuff and it's, it would be foolish to ignore that kind of input. That is awesome and you guys are leaving no one behind. It is a very exciting title, beautifully put together. James, thank you for sitting down and joining us today. Thanks very much. Cheers.